Viper gives you an easy way to protect against reentrancy. So I'm going to show you examples of how to use the non-reentrant decorator to protect your contract against reentrancy. But before I show you some examples, I'm going to show you one way of implementing a reentrancy lock. And this will give you a better picture of what the reentrancy lock is used for. All right, the basic goal of a reentrancy lock is that you are trying to prevent functions inside the contract from being called while a function is called and is still executing. What would that look like? Here I have a simple function. When this function is called, it does some stuff and somewhere inside this code, it will make an external call. To keep this example simple, I just used raw call to call the default function of message.sender. In Solidity, this will call the fallback function. Now once message.sender is called, if message.sender is a contract, then this will execute the default function. And message.sender will be able to call back into this function while this function is still executing. So if there was more code over here, message.sender will be able to execute this part of the code before the code below executes by calling back into this function before this function finishes executing its code over here. And to prevent this from happening, we need to implement a reentrancy lock. So we need a state variable called locked. And when this function is called, we'll set the lock to true. When the function finishes executing, we'll set the lock back to false. Finally, to prevent reentrancy, we will first check that the locked state variable is set to false. So when someone calls this function for the first time, this lock will still be false. Then we set it to true. We make an external call. And if message.sender tries to call back before this part of the code executes, then it will fail this check and the function will fail. So that is the basic idea of how to implement a reentrancy lock. Now what's nice about Viper is that you don't have to write this code. We can easily implement a reentrancy lock in Viper using non-reentrant decorator. The simplest way to use the non-reentrant decorator is to declare at non-reentrant and then inside the parentheses put in the name of the lock. For this example, I'll just name it lock. Later on, I'll show you a more advanced way of using this non-reentrant decorator. To test this non-reentrant lock, I've created a contract on the right. And I've also declared a function. When we call this function, it will call the call me function over here on the left. And then when the raw call is executed, this will call the default function. This default function will call the call me function again. But because we have a non-reentrant lock over here, the second time we call call me, this function will throw an error. Inside Remix, I've activated the Viper plugin by clicking on this plugin icon. And then I compile the two contracts. The contract showing how to use the non-reentrant lock and the contract that will try to do the reentrancy. And then I've deployed these two contracts over here. So now we're going to be calling this function test reentrancy lock. And I want to show you that calling this function will fail because we have a non-reentrant lock over here. All right, so I'm going to click on this test reentrancy lock contract and then call the function. And you can see over here that the transaction to call the function test reentrancy lock failed. And it failed because the non-reentrant lock protected this contract from reentrancy. For the next example, I'm going to show you another example of using the non-reentrant lock. And this time we'll take a look at what happens if we name the lock different. And to show you what I mean over here, I'm going to first copy this code and then paste it here. And for the name of the lock, I'll name it lock2. Also name the function a little bit different. I'll call it call me2. And for the log, we'll say here, here. Other than that, it's the same. It's going to call the default function of message.sender. 
by giving different names to the locks. So here the name is lock, over here the name of the lock is lock2. We can create different reentrancy lock for different functions or for a group of functions. For example, let's say that call me is called. This will call back message.sender. And now message.sender won't be able to call back into this call me function because of the lock over here above. But what message.sender can do instead is call call me too. This is because this is the first time that call me too is called. Now if message.sender tries to call back into call me or call me too, by this point of time, both of these locks are set to true, so they cannot be re-entered. So if message.sender tries to call either one of them, the call will fail. With these two different locks, to show you that I can do a re-entrancy into this contract, as long as these two functions are not called twice. Over here on the right, I'm going to modify this code a little bit. So instead of calling the call me function twice, for the second time, I'm going to call the call me to function. Let's walk through what's going to happen when we call the test reentrancy log function. It's going to call the call me function once. This will call raw call and call the default function. And then the default function will call the call me to function. The call me to function will again call the default function. But by this time, since i is equal to 1, this reentrancy will not execute. I've recompiled and redeployed the two contracts. So when we call this function, inside the transaction, you can see here that the transaction was successful. You can also see that two events were logged. And these two events correspond to the logs, the first one from here and the second one from here. So that's how you create different logs for different functions by naming them differently. Thanks for watching and see you later.